In the following video, we want to study the technique needed for showing data, which includes computing the growth rate, the rule of 72, and the log scale plot. But before we do that, we want to go through the definition for GDP again. We said that for GDP, it is the sum product of the price and the quantities. Therefore, the changes in the GDP may be due to two factors. One is due to the changes in the prices, and the other is due to the changes in the quantities. So then, when we want to measure the performance of an economy, for example, the growth rate of the output, we prefer to know how much is the quantity that is produced got change instead of there is a changes in the price. Therefore, when we want to compute the growth rate of GDP, we focus on the real GDP. As you may recall what we already learned, that for real GDP, we control the price changes. Because of that, the changes will in the real GDP will be due to changes in the quantities and there won't be changes in the price. So then when we say we control the price changes, it means that we use the price of the base year and then uh, because we control the price changes, the changes in the real GDP is now due to the changes in the quantities. Therefore, this is what we care. So then now we define the growth rate of GDP. We say that the GDP's growth rate is equal to the real GDP divided by the real GDP in the previous period. Given that we want the growth rate, which is not gross growth rate, but net growth rate, so we need to minus one. And then, so if we look at this formula, we rewrite the definition for the real GDP. We notice that the numerator is the sum product of the price and the quantity. The price is related to the base here. For the denominator, it is also the sum product of the price and quantity. The price is the base year, but for both the numerator and the denominator, the quantity is the quantity of the particular year. So then clearly from this formula, we know that when we compute the growth rate, we use the real GDP. The changes in the price is controlled. It doesn't change over time, but the quantity got changed over time. Therefore, this is the growth rate of the GDP. So now we already know how to compute the growth rate. In this slide, I define the growth rate for GDP and also for the GDP per capita and then also the average annual growth rate. So as you can see in here, we do not specify whether or not it is real, but we know that we are talking about real because when we want to look at the growth rate, we need to put in the real GDP. If we don't put in the real GDP, we use the nominal GDP, then the growth rate not only includes the changes in the price, but also changes in the quantity. And that is not what we want. We want to focus on the growth rate that is related to changes in the quantity. So remember in here that we use the real GDP instead of the nominal GDP. And then when we care about the welfare of the nation, we care about how much GDP per capita or each individual have, or how does that change over time. Therefore, a lot of time we look at the GDP per capita instead of the GDP. So then toward the end of this slide, uh, I define a term that is called the average annual growth rate. In here, because we may know the real GDP per capita, for example, in 2020, and then we also know the real GDP per capita in 2025. Given that there are five year difference, then we know that we need to um, Talk, when we talk about the growth rate, we prefer to talk about the annual growth rate. That is the same as when we talk about the interest rate. When you go to the bank, they tell you the annualized interest rate instead of the monthly interest rate or the quarterly interest rate. Therefore, to standardize the expression, we want to focus on the annual growth rate, even though that data that is with five-year differences. 
So then to annualize the growth rate, we need to uh, take a, a root of that. So if we have the real GDP per capita in 2025 and also 2020. Then we use the real GDP per capita in 2025 in the numerator and then use the real GDP per capita in 2020 in the denominator. And then we take the root of five in this case because we have five year differences. And then we will be able to annualize the growth rate. So this is about how to compute the growth rate. Now here is a couple of interesting or details about the techniques when we talk about growth rate. Uh, in here, I want to introduce the concept called rule of 70 or 72. The rule of the 70 or the 72 states that the number of years it takes for the label of the variable to double is approximately 70 divided by the annual percentage growth rate of the variable. So if we say it is rule 72, then we need to use 72 divided by the annual percentage growth rate of the particular variable. In fact, that using 72 is more precise, but given that it is a rule of thumb, uh, using 70 is also acceptable and it is not of the real uh, number of the year that needed to double too much. Okay, it is just a rule of the thumb. So what does it mean? Imagine that if you go to the bank, they say that, hey, I'm going to give you an interest rate that is 1%. And say, mm, I think that interest rate is low. Why it is low? It will take me 72 years to double if I adopt the rule of 72. So it means that in my lifetime, my when I put my money into the bank with the interest rate that is 1%, that it may only double once. Oh, not too much. That $100 will only become $200. But imagine that if the interest rate is 18%, then when we have the 72 divided by 18, then it means that that equals, um, equals 4, which means that if I put my money into the bank, it will double every 4 years. So then it means that if my lifetime, if I can, um, it, it will be, I will be able to have my money that double more than once. Uh, so if uh, I can live another 60 years, then it means that 60 divided by 4, it will be 15, which means that if I put my money into the bank, then it will double 15 times. How significant is that double effect? Well, if it double once, then it is from 100 to 200. So if it doubles 15 times, it means that after 60 years, it will become 3,276,800. So it will make a significant difference, 200 versus 3 million. So now you know that uh, by the rule of the 72, uh, you will know that how significant is an interest rate or the growth rate. Now toward the end of today's lecture, I want to talk about a technique that we use when we plot graphs uh, to represent a growth rate. When we draw the graph for a time series, for example, in here it shows the CPI, the consumer price from 1972 to 2012. As you can see in here, that, that the time pass is quite smooth and just steadily going up. And then, but does it mean that the growth rate of the price is remain roughly constant? It turned out to be not the case because we know in here, the y-axis is a normal scale. So then the gap between 100 to 200 and the 300 to 400 are exactly the same. However, when the consumer price grows from 100 to 200, it doubles. But when it grows from 300 to 400, it only increased by 
Therefore, even though in the graph it seems that the growth rate or the time pass is increasing at a smooth path, in fact, it is not the case. So, is there any way we can see the graph and then know what is the growth rate of the variable? It turned out to be yes. There is a way we can do that and we need to adopt the ratio scale or we call the log scale. When we use the log scale, that is the graph below, you can see that the distance between 100 to 200 and 200 to 400 are exactly the same, which means that if we have the time change that are exactly the same, then uh, if the growth rate are exactly the same, for example, they doubles, then the slope should be exactly the same. Therefore, when we replot the upper graph to the lower graph in here, you will see that from 1970s to the 1980s, the slope of the curve is steeper than the slope of the curve from 1980s to the 2012. So as you can see from here, that with the same time length, that is 10 years, for example, from 1972 to 1982, the y-axis increase is much more than the y-axis increase from 1992 to 2002. In other words, the increase in the price is much faster in the 70s than in the 1990s. So that's the usefulness of the log scale, that from the slope of the curve, you will be able to tell the growth rate differences. If the line is flatter, then the growth rate is lower. If the line is steeper, then the growth rate is higher. So remember that in the future, when you want to plot the time trend of a, a time series or for a variable, for example, GDP, then if you want to tell the story about how fast it grows, then remember to use the log scale, or we call it the ratio scale, such that the slope of the curve will represent the growth rate. So here we complete the discussion for today's lecture.